Hey. Are, Bob. Here we are again. Happy Wide St. Awake. Patrick's Day to all of you. Maybe uh, each one of you have a snake in your backyard. And we're just tickled to death to be here on St. Patrick's mm. Day. Uh, I believe this is uh, March the 17th. And yes, we've babe. got real pretty weather here in La Follette, Tennessee, U.S. of A. And we're just tickled to death to be coming to you. This is the Wild Bob and Ronnie Show. And we have our resident guru with us today, R.L. <laughs> Henson. And uh, we just like to know one thing, old master, just what is the real meaning uh, of life? That's a good one, boy. I, I'll tell you what. The meaning of life. Never had thought about it, but I had a fellow that asked me one time, and I, he asked me, Wh which way is up? Do you remember a fellow asking me that one time? Yes, he was. Asked me which way was up. And the guy, I knew that yeah. he was setting me up for something because he was a real sharp feller. Uh, in more of the ways than one, he was sharp. And I thought about it, and I said, well... I always uh, liked that feller. Yeah, he's a good feller. I said, up is the opposite of down. And I said, down is, de is determined by which way gravity affects an object. So that's how you determine which well, way you is ever think, up. Did you ever get in an argument with a Chinaman on the phone about which way is up and both of you be pointing in a different direction? <laughs> I just said a racist thing, didn't a Chinaman? <laughs> Chinese okay. individual. A individual, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. But anyhow. That's racist uh, and sexist both. Has that was that not the question that the Dalai Lama pondered for years and what years? That, what was the real meaning of life? Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. That's the one where they always uh, uh, climb up the mountain to yeah. uh, talk to this real wise person, you know. And uh, uh, I, I prefer a lighter note on <laughs> on life, you know. Uh, well, I, than getting so serious. The the way I take it. Is, you, anymore, I take it one day at a time. Right. That's how I take life. Uh, to define it, we it takes the rest of this day and a lot of others, I guess, to sort that out. Probably. Yeah. Very well, I, uh, I've been real interested in this shift in the magnetic pole. And I read an article the other day. It seems like NASA now is becoming concerned about it. And they've come to the point that they got concerned enough that they have placed three identical satellites out in near-Earth orbit to, I don't know whether you say monitor it or study it or whatever, but... Uh, they're kind of concerned or interested into where this magnetic north is going or where it's going to stop at or whatever. Right. And also, uh, part of this article kind of made reference to the fact that this could have a lot to do with... Global warming? Yeah, global warming. Climate Damn. change or day and night or whatever. Oh, boy. Are they really yeah. tying right. that together? Well... I uh, know they had earthquakes blamed on and tsunamis, but... On this uh, global warming shift on the no global warming on global warming okay well they're not they're not trying to say that global warming affects the shift they're saying that the shift the could effect affect global. the weather let me put it that <laughs> okay. way by by yeah but see they are losing their importance as humans if they try to they quit blaming it on what humans are doing and. Pointing the finger at a natu natu uh, natural occurrence. Right, a natural occurrence. And that's what this is. I don't think that we have enough influence on Earth, and I don't think Earth cares one way or the other, where we're, we're kind of like chiggers out here on it, as the magnetic pole. Oh, but oh, it, it's an ego. I, was, I, I, hey. got, I, I got a tick bite today. Hey. Well, good for you. First well, I know, point, but huh? it was below zero a week. Yeah. Hey, uh -huh. it is uh, real degrading to human beings to have to admit that they are not the ones that determine, that we're not the ones that determine in climate. We're definitely not in control of it. I, 
uh, all countries, whatever, have tried every way in the world to be able to control uh, weather. Because if you can control weather, you can control the world. Uh, it's just like a battle. If you can control what the weather's going to be, let's say that you're going to <clears throat> figure you're going to have a battle and you can put the temperature down to 40 below zero wherever your opponent's at while you're getting your stuff as long together. As you ain't fighting no Eskimos. Well, as long as, long as you... But anyhow, they've tried this to, and to a certain effect. I believe that seeding the clouds has worked a little bit, uh, but well, they, most they, of it they're not they've been, been able, able to. maybe to create a weaker uh, area yeah. in the, in the uh, a hurricane where it will kindly shift in that direction. You know, well, to to see the cloud, I guess mostly what they do is they spray something in the cloud that'll draw the moisture, which will turn the cloud into drain droplets of water, and gravity does the rest. But uh, the point they was trying to make as far as this magnetic change is, or magnetic north, is that it could be affecting the, go the, the thing, the, what is it called? The jet stream. Jet stream. That it's causing the jet stream to pull a little bit further west and a little further south. That makes sense. Well, I mean, that's, that's what it they're really saying. Does. They're saying, by this thing of moving... Uh, I guess we would call it west because it's moved towards Siberia. I can't Siberia. exactly remember where I read it, but they have core drilled uh, some glaciers okay. way on back millions of years ago. And where, what is now the frozen area of the Arctic yield remnants of palm trees and other tropical vegetation. Yeah. Right. Well, well, you know, you used to have everything was together. What do they call the one thing? Uh, Pangea. I'm and not it, familiar with that well, term. Well, Pangea, according to the geologists and the earth scientists, at one time, all of the, and, 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 and this will get back to Bible if you want to go that way. Mm -hmm. At one time, there was one mass of uh, one continent yeah. let's say and because uh -huh. of continental drift it split apart and if you take a map and look at it the pieces fit right back together put it right back yeah. into one and you know <clears throat> there's wells in britain is uh where they've done all their coal mining at there's a, okay. there's some coal there just big seam of coal and that's where the, that, the welsh coal miners that was their livelihood. That's what they did. That was their family profession. You go to Pennsylvania, and there's a seam of coal that would slide together with that if you want to. Okay. But they claim you can take a miner from either either mine and blindfold him and take him in to the to the corresponding seam on the other side of the Atlantic, and he can't tell the difference. That's that much alike, and they test out similarly. Right. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. That's interesting. The uh, <clears throat> on the local scheme, as far as coal is concerned, we have the coal <clears throat> back in certain areas, but yet out in the valley, you go out here and drill a well, and some wells are unbelievable depth, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's just according to where the water is, but never hit coal. You go right through the limestone and just you keep going to you. And if you had a coal seam done this, mm -hmm. and, and it, and yeah. that, that gets it in these areas and not in the other. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I've never heard of anyone drilling in the valley through here, no matter how deep they drill a water well <coughs> that's ever hit coal. No, I never have either. Mm -hmm. But this was originally uh, Powell River Valley down through here. It was. It got shifted over up there or somewhere? Yeah, the, the, uh, the rivers changed courses, but that, that's why it's called Powell Valley, is because of Powell River, <coughs> Powell River Valley. You know, they used to have uh, uh, battles uh, over the Mississippi. If a, if a town, at one time, a town that had uh, a river 
Southport had landing, they had more business. And there are certain places in the Mississippi where if you catch it just right, you can dig a ditch between two places and right. steal somebody's riverfront and bring it over <laughs> your town. And they had people killing each other trying that stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. All, all sorts of things. Uh, <coughs> uh, I've, uh, <coughs> you know, during the big election back, what's it been about uh, so many months back, I heard all this discussion going on about uh, why Campbell County wasn't uh, keeping up with Anderson County or compared to it. found an article in the paper that I hadn't heard of. <clears throat> it seems that Oak Ridge got $1.9 billion of this shovel-ready money. And that's where we got all our new road signs. That's where we got this shovel-ready money. And I had never heard of it going there, but right. common sense would tell you it would. And now they've spent down out of the one point, I believe it's $1.9 billion, they've got it down to about $3 million left or something like that. And one of the other agencies may be three or 400000 so they've been able to spend. They've been doing a lot of shoveling, ain't they? Well, it's a dirty job they had to do, but they finally got it spent. Yeah, the, uh, it seems like from what they're saying, yeah, they spent the most of it on uh, uh, doing cleanup. <laughs> I thought you were going to say uh, <coughs> liquor, cards, and wild women. Hey, that brings up another one, boy. That brings up a good one. <coughs> but anyhow, if you can put that much money in this short a period of time into one location, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Shovel-ready money. Right. That's part of the trillion and some dollars. And that what maybe what we need is we need us a radioactive spill or something here. Not on my land. Well, <laughs> something. You know, if you tires it, are bad enough. Yeah, if yeah, you own you it, go. you got to clean it up, no matter who <laughs> puts it there. Well, if you could get the government to pay, you know, if we just got to you can get them to dump it. Dollars. They'll dump it for you, but you got to clean it up yourself. Well, uh. Seems like the government dumped this themselves. Well, I'm telling you, a fella got something dumped on yeah. him, and that's, I had to move it for him. Yeah, follows the title, doesn't it? Uh, but now, there's another thing coming in here. Uh, the governor spoke, I believe it was last week, about this new company that's going to locate from Canada down here. I think it's corporate headquarters down there. Yeah, they're, they're going to. They're dealing in powder, uh, powder metal. Uh, right. Powder, uh, yeah. The, powder uh, metal? Well, it's, uh, my first thought was spray weld, which it may run into that I'm too. I'm thinking um, printers. That's what it is, printers. 3D printers. And uh, printing with metal. You and know, they're going to just print you out a car someday. That's correct. They done printed one down there that oh, uh, oh, that Biden was going to, they was afraid he's going to try to drive it when Obama <coughs> was down here. Oh, boy. They, they, they were scared to death. Where's, this, where's this place of road relocating to? Uh, Oak Ridge yeah. and Roan County. Uh, Most of it's located on the Roan County side of Oak Ridge. It seems <coughs> down at Oak Ridge where they've... Uh, <coughs> My understanding is where they've took down the a couple of these places that glows in the dark, right? And they've supposedly cleaned it up, which for what that's worth, and they build a building there. And they've already had two occupants in the building. Uh, well, let me. T I'm not going to say they occupied the building. They got the money to start a business probably like uh, one of the solar outfits or something like that and once they got the money and the grants and whatever else uh, they just never did nothing to enough. They kind of disappeared. Well the governor says that these people here are for real and that they're going to invest 313 million three hundred thirteen million dollars but they would not state what incentives that they're going to get. I think to they move got here. Uh, ten or fifteen years tax free. Well, they got, I believe it's fourteen years tax free on personal property. Right. 
and I think the personal property was either the property or the tax was two hundred ninety two million dollars right so if they're going to if that's okay if you back up and go across that that's pretty much two hundred ninety two million free dollars and if they're going to invest three hundred and thirteen million dollars that's no more than about ten million dollars difference right so and the TVA well, they didn't say who was going to invest it. <laughs> well, that's correct. The TVA but what, has... But, uh, you know, uh, actually, uh, giving them that tax incentive with the payroll they put out, will be putting out every month. Not a bad investment. Well, I, I can't argue that point, but... What would be the problem with doing the same thing on a small scale to anybody that wants to go in business or that is already in business? You got to know somebody. What would be the difference? Like uh, if you've got a business out here and you're employing, say, a dozen people, why not give you a break just like this? Why not say, okay, you've got 14 years of personal property tax free? Same as on per ratio is what they're doing there okay. because what they're doing there is taking what taxes that the individuals out here are paying transferring it to this place and it would be the same multiple because right but one of the problems i see with what they're doing he's taking the case of tva TVA is cutting them a whole lot of slack on the, their energy use. Uh -huh. okay. Now the slack that the TVA is cutting them on their energy use is being uh, passed on to people throughout the TVA system. So we here in Campbell County uh, are helping uh, T uh, TVA to pump money into this company in Anderson County but the people in Campbell County are having to pay uh, a higher rate than they normally would if that money had not been put out that way. So uh, I think they ought to, uh, uh, TVA ought to use their uh, uh, ability to do that sort of thing uh, to make businesses available in other areas, not just Anderson and Roan County. The other side of the thing is, <clears throat> why not allow, wh why should the government pick winners and losers? Why should the government... They ain't had a real good track record doing that, by well, the way. Well, what's, what's the benefit? Why not, I hate to th even use the word law, and it wouldn't even have to be a law. Uh, and I'd say there's not a law that says TVA must do this. No. Uh, but why, why take the revenue, and I know it, it don't sound like a whole lot, but it is, it's a lot of money if you add up all the people that are having to pay for this. But there's, why not let these companies do it on their own? Uh, why should the government even get involved in it? Let the company, uh, that's what they do for us. If we're out here as individuals starting a company and trying to survive, they don't take sides and help us. You mean you didn't get incubated? Incubated, right. Yeah, uh, I could tell you the history of how I got there, but it's not, the government didn't hand us, the TVA never offered us one break on anything, neither has any of the taxes, the city, county, government, or anybody ever gave us a break on anything. You know, so, but, I, I've had similar experience myself. Okay. Then why, wh what form of, is this, uh, it's not true capitalism when the government can step in and shell out this kind of revenue or money or resources to a company. It's not really capitalism. It's well, more no, along the line of... No, 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 no. It ain't been true capitalism since... Probably about 1910. You're probably...
pretty close to right. 1910. And you that goes so far back I can't hardly remember you, you, it, but... Well, Bob remembers it. Mm -hmm. look, look, <laughs> look at how much, how much this country, how much wealth this country generated between 1865 when the war just destroyed everything and 1910 whenever the progressives took over to try to spread the wealth around. Now you look, that's 45 years. You look at what happened from a destroyed country to 1910, we built railroads, we done everything, buddy. Mm -hmm. Without the government. In spite of the government, right. and then they got on board right. to, to make sure that they got some of that money spread around to the little people. Right. And the little people was better off than they'd ever been. And once they got their fingers in the pot, how did that work out for them, say, from 1929 through about 1939? <coughs> like starved them to death. I noticed you've got a note there or something about the Follett House. You got any info on that deal? The only what I've heard so far and read in the paper about it, and it, this La Follett House, I'm as sentimental about history as anybody else. But I don't feel that the city would make a, a good choice in buying this property, I don't feel that the city would make a good choice if they donated the property to the I city. I don't either. The uh, thing is nothing but a liability. I wouldn't have it as a gift if the only I thing I could do was keep it up and live in it. I would not. Well, I wouldn't even have it to live in. That's what I said. Uh, well, you'd freeze death in a bet you. Well, you can't. It's got a historical overlay on it. Yep. <clears throat> and you can't legally drive a nail in it without you go kiss somebody's sit You don't side. own it. You don't own it. You don't it. own it. I you mean, have to core drill that board before you can drive, drive a nail in it. Well, the, you'd be surprised all the stuff that's involved. You have to get permission to paint it. Yeah, you can't even... Well, there's nothing you can... No, you don't own it like you don't own anything else as a matter of fact. But, the city, I, well, I just I can't comprehend why they would even consider. Well, the city do what they want to do. Uh, whenever you say city, we're talking about five people. That's four commissioners and a mayor that make all the decisions, and we can't have some influence on their decisions probably by expressing our opinions. But in my opinion, <coughs> from a uh, I don't know what point of view you'd call it. Historic, historically, I like anything that's old, but I don't like it to the point that I think all the citizens, let's, let's say that some person out here that's doing all they can to pay the light and water bill and eat, why should they have to pay for this house? And they will. They have to pay their part to pay sure. for it. And that's not right. Now, my solution to the thing, or how I feel about it, is if I feel strong enough about history and whatever else, put a group together. Let, uh, let a group get together and say, <coughs> hey, we'll put up the money, we'll bid it, and we'll own it. Set them up a corporation, uh, anything they want to. But don't use taxpayer money on it. Right. And don't take it off the tax record. Leave them out there to where that it can be private enterprise and well, that's that would just be a, a white elephant is what that'd be well like I said I, I like I wouldn't have it if it was give like you say as a gift I wouldn't take it and pay the taxes on it well you obligate yourself to keep it up that's correct you are and by owning it uh, I had I've heard the thing about uh, the historical society would like to put it to use for like a museum or something like that. Let them buy it. Well, but not with taxpayers' money. No, like with, well, now that's what they want. They want but still to. yet, that'll take it off the tax. Uh, no, not if it's bought as a private well, ownership thing. The historical society would be a tax-exempt organization. They don't get 
property taxes exempt do they? I'll bet you they do too. I'm not sure, but if you check it, it would. Well, but, I ought to be tax exempt. I don't make no money. That's right. You're I'm a non-profit. non-profit. But here's well, the you thing. You mean if you're a non-profit, you can get out paying your taxes? Yeah, I guess. Well, but, yeah. Uh, I, I guess yeah. I qualify then. Get, get, uh, get your certificate as a non-profit organization. But anyhow, the uh, other part of the thing is, in order to uh, have a museum or a place that you're going to store antiques and whatever, <coughs> that's not the place. You have to it's make not, it's no. not. Well, it's I think not, the city uh, of La Follette needs a La Follette house about like they need an old post office, w about w like they need a walking trail, yeah. and about like they need a new bridge on Beach. Yeah, and so, uh, that, that's the, you, to store the kind of stuff they've got, you need something that's uh, you have climate, to have climate control. control. You must keep the humidity correct. If you don't, all your old papers and stuff like that will deteriorate and disappear. They'll melt and go away if you don't have a climate control. And then, if you go back to the climate control part of it, then you're going to have to get a waiver from this historic yeah. overlay to even do that. Not, now like I say, I bet they buy it. Well, if they do, who owns it? Some individual owns it now. Yeah, I know that, but mm -hmm. it it depends on who the individual is, whether they buy it or not. Well, I'll well, tell you a minute here. I don't know, but uh, I sympathize with whoever holds title to it and has invested their effort or whatever into it. And I heard uh, a comment made that a large percentage of the original trimmings, like the faucets, the bathtubs, and a lot of the older stuff, you know what I'm saying, right. the antique part has been robbed out of it, is what right. I'm, my understanding is. Now, I could be wrong about that. Right. I, I'm, I've I'm never that been in it. Secondhand information. Right. But it makes sense, considering uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the vandals hadn't took all the wiring out of it. Right, boys. Well, there's somebody living there. I mean, it's, it's is it inhabited? I don't know. It, it, there's people in and out. I don't think it's been stripped well, out yet. The East Lafayette School sort of ran into that, didn't it? Yeah, they? on purpose, I think. It got stripped out. Yeah, it's. I think the former administration. They're, they're thinking about hiring some of that former administration to administrate the current oh administration. Oh, Lord. I'll tell you, if they do that, I'd like to cut ties or sever relationship with everybody involved in it if they rehire some right. people. With with the past history of what the city has gone through, I, I don't have, know how to even word it. Well, I well, the city. Got thinking, wouldn't it be great if they did hire him? <laughs> That'd be the city reminds that. me of uh, officials remind me of Nero when he just fiddled and watched the city of Rome burn. Well, yeah. they're sitting up there and they're getting a larger and larger share of an ever de uh, decreasing pie, and uh, uh, you know they're just tickled to death, you know. Uh, at what they're getting up there, even though, you know, nobody shops down in uh, La Follette anymore. Well, uh, there's, that, there's a yeah, bunch that's of right. hang around down there at Mama's Kitchen, you know, and talk about uh, the good old days, you know, and uh, uh, they're getting ready to spend a bunch of money to get people to come back down to the uh, downtown area. And uh, they had concrete. the biggest drawing card uh, that they got a thank you from the Campbell County EMA. How about that? <coughs> What'd you do, pour dust on or something? Uh, <coughs> they had a little mishap. Yeah. And they needed some material to contain it. And well, I was down there. Was they had the biggest drawing card in the uh, flea market down there. And they're going up uh, up the rates and run everybody off. Yeah. And uh, they, they would have done well to let everybody set up down there for free. Mm -hmm. uh, the number of people that were drawn to the downtown area as a result of that flea market. 
there's a, a there's a lot of things if you really want to know what it's worth let's say a lot of these projects and I'm going to say that has to do with sportings. Let's say a ball field. Do you think that there's enough interest in a ball field? Now I'm going to say uh, Jeff Stone. Okay. Let's say this ball field over on West End. Okay. Do you think there's enough interest in that community for the residents of that community to take care of that ball field? Mow it? maintain it and whatever else do you think there's enough interest in it for well, that kind of been through, through that you know when they originally uh, do ball fields like that everybody's got a young and that's going to participate right. but pretty soon all the young ones grow up nobody stays here in campbell county or in la Folly. they all move off so you never have a fresh group of young people in a in a neighborhood to come along uh, to make it worthwhile to uh, mow the grass and uh, keep the infill in good shape and uh, uh, that sort of thing. Well, if it weren't, if it weren't to, for the way, there's not enough interest. And I'm talking about, when I say interest, I'm talking about people are willing to get out there and bend their back and take care of these things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I there's that. not enough community interest and what it boils down to, it ends up being a jobs program where that the cities or the utility or whatever department ends up mowing it, maintaining it, taking care of it. Recreation okay, department. now, this goes back out to what I'm saying about you got grandma over here paying her property taxes that don't never go to the ball field or couldn't care less. And there's thousands of them around here, people that that have no interest or whatever, but yet they have to pay for that. Uh, well, you have to realize that the majority of the money paid into the school system is paid into it by people who ain't got no youngins. That's true. And that's another thing. We're not, I don't think we're getting a whole lot of return on our investment in education. Sure, well, we are a farm club. <coughs> All these other areas around here, we well, graduate 350, upwards of 350 kids per year from our high schools, and there's not 350 jobs in the whole county. Uh, they all have to go elsewhere uh, unless they want to be a, a convenience store uh, clerk or Walmart, and they, and uh, they depend on the turnover there uh, to get a job. Uh, you know. There's just not that many private sector jobs in the whole county. There's, you got the Royal up here uh, that pays pretty good, and you got the, the uh, uh, automotive industry uh, uh, corporations up there on exit 141 that pays pretty good. But did you know that uh, throughout this country, the average and do you know what the average industrial wage is per hour? I have no idea. $30. Is that the average? Are you talking about? Over this country. Early, early workers? Huh? Early workers? Early workers. Is $30 on the average. The average. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a lot well, higher than I would If you need thought. any spark plugs, Bob's got the number for the county mayor's office, well, and he can you, fix you, you up with some spark plugs. You call R uh, uh, E L down there and tell E L if you would. Would you kindly please call Randy at Napa, which is that's National Automobile Parts Association, and uh, I have Randy to look me up some parts for a '53 Hudson, because uh, you know the telephone number for Napa. Uh, all you got to do is get your uh, nine turned upside down and you've got the <coughs> county mayor's office. So if you're, if you're working under a car uh, hanging upside down and you try to call Napa at 562-2529, uh, 
Uh, you might just wind up uh, with the city merit okay. five six two two five two six. Bob is a pretty knowledgeable guy. He knows what Napa stands for, but he can't get the mayor out of the business. <laughs> five six two two five two nine. If you, you need know, any spark plugs, you know, it looks like the mayor is <coughs> coming to take over for somebody in their business for one day. You know, just to give them a little break. Good. And now if he'd take over for them EMS people, uh, vital care, he could get a real experience there, hauling them people around and right. trying to get them healthy and well right. and living you know, in different he, places. He, he, is he still looking for a new director for the I EM? think he is. But what he needs to do is go by and spend a day with vital care and observe their op. No, really, you know, uh, that, 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 that's almost... Uh, you know, that, that'd be too easy for him to do that, you know. He'd rather get down there and tough it out and do a trial think, by error. I think instead of getting a new uh, overseer, they need to sell ambulances to battle care. I think so. 562 if you need a good ambulance ride. And, well, if you have, have to have a, a one of those iron lungs, which is now called a respirator, I believe, uh, yeah, they have the only mobile ventilator, not a ventilator. I thought when you ventilated somebody, you put some <laughs> slug to him. D different meanings for the same word. <laughs> <laughs> but vital uh, care, they, they, you can't go wrong. Just call 562-9370 or call 911 and tell them that you want vital care dispatched to your residence or <coughs> wherever you need them. And speaking... And, uh, They'll take care of you. Speaking of ventilation, if your house has got too much ventilation, it's supposed to get down to the 30s tonight. If you've got too much ventilation, you may need some of Digger's propane to help warm the thing up. I guarantee you, he's still got some of that winter propane Not left. there in the middle of the road in Sawmill Holler. Yeah, he's got some winter propane left. It's going down that period of tank up, and you'll never know it got in the 30s tonight. 562. Nine five no. four four four. Yeah, five four four four. 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 It's four forty four. <laughs> right, that's Wilson's propane. And also, you might. Uh, what does it say on that sign down there at the end of the field that they're having a spaghetti supper? It's when spaghetti <coughs> supper? When is it? Friday? <coughs> this Friday? I don't know. I don't know when it is. I didn't read the sign. I just saw it. I, I just saw a spaghetti supper, you yeah. know, and I immediately got hungry. Yeah, me too. I got hungry just yeah. thinking about it. It may be this Friday. I'm not sure, folks. Well, look at the sign more. up here on the side of the road right before you right. get to the high school going right. south. Right. If you can read that sign and understand it, blow the horn when you go by. Yeah, if you can read that sign, blow your horn. Right. I guess that's it, ain't it? Well, there's a... I heard this morning on talk radio, and I believe uh, our representative nicely has introduced a bill, and he shared the credit with someone else that came up with the idea, and I think he's uh, uh, entered, co-signed on it, or anyhow, he introduced it or something. But on this bill, what they're uh, proposing is that if you have been caught three times with DUI that there you go no uh, what they're going to do is have it printed across the top front of your uh, overlay over your driver's license no alcohol or buy no alcohol to where that you cannot purchase liquor beer or whatever else and the uh, there was a police officer, and well, let me back up a little further. One of the other callers who called in said that the, he was from Ohio, and that they up there, whenever you have a one of these situations where you're caught driving under the influence, or whatever, they put a big yellow license plate on your vehicle. Yeah, put a stamp right across your well, head. It shows up in the dark or whatever else. And this police officer says, well, that may be fine and dandy, but says, uh, what happens when uh, your, wife your wife drives the car and you take your children to school? 
And, you know, one thing kind of leads to Shame the other. my whole family. Yeah, right. But the thing that got me about it is what they're doing, just like if I want to go buy alcoholic whatever, uh, I know people or whatever that, in other words, they can look at me and tell that I'm just slightly over 21. And, and they card me. Well, no, I can understand uh, that. Anyhow, I you can don't understand look a day you, over you 18. No, you don't look a day over 18. But now, you take with all this gray hair I've got and what little bit I've got left, and I guess what we've done, and that, that's another segment. But anyhow, the point I'm getting to is what we're doing, <laughs> we're, uh, we're uh, transferring... <coughs> This uh, liability, another thing, off onto the people who sell alcohol, mm -hmm. to where that they're becoming enforcers, unwilling enforcers or whatever of the law. Now, a person <coughs> who has been caught three times under the influence or whatever looks like the judicial system would take care of it, rather than transferring it off onto the private enterprise to take care of it. Well, you know, uh, everything follows the path of least resistance. Well, rather than uh, doing it like it ought to be done, they do it hand the it off. easy way. They're gonna put it off on hand the, it off to somebody the retailer, else. you yeah. know. And uh, to me, if uh, uh, an underage person goes in and buys a six pack of beer and is caught, I think they ought to take him home and make his parents beat the lord out of him. Well. Uh, <coughs> There's Rather than doing anything to the uh, uh, retailer. Right. We always looking for a way. All, they, all these uh, <clears throat> lawmakers down there, all they have to do is say yay or nay. They don't have to get out there and do it. It don't cost them a dime or nothing else. Well, they just say well, yay well, and see, nay. We have so many laws now that restrict people's freedoms in every way. And I don't mean you ought to have a... Uh, of a uh, guaranteed right to go out here and drive. You know, it's dangerous enough here in La Follette riding with people that ain't drinking, you know. Uh -huh. uh, maybe if they'd smoke them a joint and take them a drink, it might mellow them out a little bit and it wouldn't be nearly as dangerous to ride out there. But, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that uh, they need to transfer all well, this... Uh, I don't cut uh, any slack. Guilt. To I, the retailer. I don't cut any slack for anybody that's driving under the influence. I've got no use for it. But yet, I don't see, just like myself, I don't drive under the influence. I don't do it, and I don't think it's right because you endanger other people, yet anything, you endanger yourself as well as other people, whatever, that, that's just known. But to hand this off the way that this bill, supposedly from what I didn't read the bill, but they gave just the essence of it. And, of course, I know it would be le wrote in all sorts of legal forms. Uh, I just don't, I don't see it that way. I, Did you read uh, the article? It's taken, or? let's, let's say, uh, Bob, there's places that you could go buy alcohol <coughs> And the person behind the counter is a mature person that is able to make a decision. You know what I'm saying? It, even though it's illegal, because we got, like I say, we got law against everything. But Bob, if I was behind the counter and I was selling liquor and you come in to buy it, do you think I would card you? Oh, you'd probably turn me down because I look drunk to well, start with. Well, have a card, unless you're in Anderson County. Yeah, you don't have not by state law anyway. You don't have to have a card to buy whiskey. <laughs> okay, if, if you look of age. Yeah, but to buy beer, you do. What's the what's well, the and difference also now? to buy cigarettes. Yeah, because buy a lot more kids. Kids are more out to try to buy beer in a filling station than they are to buy whiskey and liquor. Well, and another okay. thing too. Now, and here's the other okay. reason: the liquor lobby has got a lot more money than the okay. beer lobby. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't, now, let me go back, let me go back to this. I was in an establishment 
and I set my products up that I wanted and the gentleman told me how much I paid him and whatever another person walks up sets his and down and he says uh, could you show me some ID please this person that stepped up there was much younger than I am mm -hmm. very much younger and he looked at it and he said thank you but see that was that person behind the counter made a decision I have got a little different take on this than you have because we used to sell packaged beer over here, convenience mm -hmm. store. And well, I, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I am actually, if I were doing that now, I would actually be glad that I was forced to check ID cards. Okay. Because that way you don't have somebody showing their hand in because you ask them, you know, to see something. And of course now, uh, if, if you were buying from me every day, I'd, okay. I would... I, I I would probably check you one time just to make sure you. But I tell you what gets me. Did you know that you have to have a valid driver's license? If your driver's license is run out, they're not supposed to sell you anything. <laughs> I reckon you suddenly get you younger. become younger, huh? Yeah. That's the that's another. I, I what about me? I bought a bought some uh, some beer at. Uh, a grocery store, I think it was down at Food City one time, had a dumb ice, uh, I'm a dumb person, well he looked kind of muty, had a dumb <laughs> ice there working for it and, and he wanted to see the date. I, I had my picture and I, and I had to get it out so he could look at the date. I said, I mean he had to see when it expired. Yeah. I said, well why do you have to know that? What if, I, I want to make sure it's not expired. And I said, do you think I'm going to get younger because my driver's license runs out, you dumb ass? Well this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I think if a person is back there and they they make a decision and they make it wrong, they should be held accountable. Mm -hmm. But just like you done answered one of my other questions there, if you have a person who comes in and you're in question about them and you say, well, you ID them. Now, a week later they come back in, I see no point. And well, checking them again here, if you're here, acquainted with here, them. Here's the advantage of having a law. <clears throat> if I'm just own this place, my license are on the line. Right. And if I've got people working for me, well, that that don't do don't follow the law, and, and you know, and I, I get rode up uh -huh. because they didn't, and they give you yeah. a warning or two because yeah. they didn't check it. And I've all, I already said now this is the law, and that's where we're done. Well, I go in and I find out that they've sold something to somebody underage because they didn't check the license. And ain't well, nobody going to be trying to sue me or get mad at me for firing them because I say, well, you didn't follow the law and you're out. Okay. What we're getting back to there then is whenever you hire somebody to in a position like that, you need to be hiring somebody that you can trust their judgment. Where are you going to find them? Okay. People? Now, let me go to another thing. Okay. Whenever you hire a truck driver... That truck driver makes decisions every split second. Somebody asked me. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yep. He's 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 making decisions. Now he makes a wrong decision. You, oh, I almost saw you, a wrong decision yesterday. Well, this is what I'm saying. Uh, you know but, where the road goes to to um, Heather's Point or to Grant yeah. there. Uh -huh. <coughs> there was a, there was a was boom it? truck going out through there. I think it was a city uh, electric department, the, uh -huh. the Lafayette Electric Department, but I couldn't see. I may have been wrong. Uh -huh. But it was a boom truck, and this guy goes down through there, and, and he started to go towards uh, Grant's Burr, and just at the last minute, he changed his mind. Uh oh. And he, okay. made a, he made a left and he had two wheels off of the road, and I thought, sure, he was going to roll that sucker over. And he's doing probably 40. Uh -huh. And he goes through there, and uh, well, he had wiped out half the building <laughs> down there just a little bit. But I, I really, I don't know. I, it, I, it didn't, but it just had left the impression that he got two wheels off the ground, but it didn't. It wasn't that bad, but he, he uh, nearly rolled that sucker. Well, I, I've seen some skid marks, and used to years ago when we was trucking all the time, I could almost identify a skid mark. I stayed so, so familiar with the equipment that was running that, uh, especially if road was bleeding some, I could I could tell about who I, 
or whatever. But anyhow, right. I ran into a situation here the other day, and I guess you tell personal stories too. I ran into a situation where a vehicle was driving in a very dangerous manner. I put forth all sorts of effort to get this car detained, get it stopped. And I'm talking about this car was really, to me, I put up with a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? But this was totally outrageously dangerous, what he did. He cut another car off. He did. He missed me. But he, he ran up on me so fast that my thinking said somebody's in pursuit of him. Mm -hmm. But they weren't. This guy was just stupid. Yeah, on, on a scale of 10. He was just in a hurry. Well, no, he, he wasn't in a hurry. He was just, well, he was going fast, but he was stupid. But he cut another vehicle off up in front and whatever, whatever. Well, I did whatever I could. I mean, I did everything within that of my knowledge as to who to notify. Did it, and I didn't get road rage. You know what I'm saying? It was just, to me... I'm out there. Somebody, right? Yeah, he's going to kill somebody or himself or anything. But to me, I've been out there so much you driving. Did it do any good? Absolutely not. And here's the reason: law enforcement cannot be. You know what I'm saying? This vehicle traveled. A, I'm going to hit 25 miles, and I was in the process of doing my best to keep this vehicle. It was catching traffic, and I was working my way through. But I caught myself, I was violating the law also. I had ran, at a certain point, I had exceeded. When I looked down, I was in excess of 95 at one point. When I looked no down. No wonder he wouldn't slow down. Well, I was trying. He's afraid you're going to run over him. Well. He's uh, trying to get out of your way. Yeah. Registration information is about the only, uh, description, physical description right. is one thing. But there's more than one vehicle that meets that. But that tag number, I got the tag number, uh, gave it to one out uh, agency, called that agency back, got a different dispatch, got patched through to THP, and done everything I could, you know, and I understand that you can't have a car everywhere, but at the rate of travel that this vehicle was going, it's going to be across the state line, and I did offer to stay with the vehicle for another so many miles to the next exit. And, of course, they disencouraged that. But anyhow... Well, did they put forth any effort or just laugh at you? Well, I have no idea. I had word that they would check to see if they had a vehicle in the area, a cruiser. But anyhow, here's the point I'm trying to make. What if I took a risk, I took a major risk, you know what I'm saying? By driving at that rate of speed to try to do well, what that's I could. That's a crime of necessity. Okay, but now, let's say that if I'd had an accident, I would have been, I, had, I was laying it out there on the line. Okay, but let's say that an officer come upon me doing this and he pulls me over. What's he going to do to me? You ain't supposed well, to be out in force. Well, you're going to have to tell him that this was a crime of necessity. Well, that may be true. It may have been a crime of necessity. But, uh... <laughs> see, how far you, here, see how far you get with that. Here's, uh... Years ago... Now, most most law enforcement around anymore, the ones that I've encountered are, appreciate a little help. They're not going to catch anybody without they do get some help. I mean, other than something right out here. Had one officer, he had detained a couple of fellas. They was, I don't know what the warrants was, but anyhow, when I come up on the situation, the only reason that I came on it is they were detained on our property. So I come up on the situation. First thing, the officer, he was trying to deal with the situation in, in the manner within the rules that he's allowed to deal with. Well, he asked me he, not to wear the uh, subjects, but he asked me, he said, Have you, are you armed? And I said, yes, I am. He said, if you would, he said, while I deal with this one, you make sure this one don't. 
get me from whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I positioned myself to assist this. And the guy said he appreciated it. Did you pull your pistol out? No, I never did, but it, it wouldn't have took but a split second no, no. if it was needed. That's the way I'd have done it, you too. Know, I wouldn't have I wouldn't, you. No, I wouldn't have shown no weapon. It's got to come out of your pocket and you smoke it. That's right. Uh, <coughs> now, I got something else I want to talk about. You okay, guys. go right ahead. Well, I'm just looking at it. I'm watching Fox News mm -hmm. over at the same time, and I've heard about it before today. Um, Starbucks a coffee shop has instructed their people to have a conversation about race when you go into their restaurant, their <laughs> coffee shop. <coughs> what do you think of that? Well, it's according to who's having the conversation. That conversation could con turn into a confrontation. Well, I feel like this. I ain't going. I don't. I, I, I bought coffee at Starbucks maybe two or three times. I just. It just ain't my thing. But if I go in a place and, and to buy a cup of coffee and they decide that they want to have a conversation with me about race, I'm just going to tell them to keep the coffee. I didn't come here to have this discussion. I come here to get coffee. I think, I think good business is you don't go try to insult. I mean, they may be trying to do a good thing, but if a guy comes down there and buy concrete, you don't pull him over and want to talk politics all at once, do you? You no, get his sir. money and sell him from concrete. That's they right. come here wanting to buy tin. I don't insist that we talk about Obama. I mean, let's, let's buy some tin first, and then if you want well, to talk, you start the conversation and I'll go along with it. You don't run your customers off. No, I don't. Uh, there's a time and a place for everything. And I agree. I don't. Uh, we do business with whoever comes in as long as they're civil and treat people with respect what their beliefs are and what they do is their well, business. You know, I was just watching, I was watching a little Fox News or one of the newscasts this morning and it showed uh, people of different races uh, doing different things. I don't know uh, exactly what I was watching and you know I said to myself this is great. Everybody don't have to look like me. I don't have to look like everybody else. I said, as long as they consider themselves Americans, I said, I could care mm -hmm. what color they are, what shape they come in, uh, whether they're on slim fast or whether they're on uh, uh, heavy side. It don't make no difference as long as they are consider themselves Americans. You know, I could care less about anything else. Well, I, I agree I know, with my, you. One That's, of my first, uh, you know who one of my first heroes was as a young man? No Joe you. Lewis. Joe Lewis. Mm -hmm. I was so proud he about knocked Max Smelling's head off <laughs> uh, that I could hardly express myself. <laughs> In other words, you didn't like the other guy. <laughs> well, Max Smelling, you know, he was a uh, uh, Nazi uh, representing Germany. Oh. And, uh, uh, Joe Lewis just uh, beat him up terrible, and Joe Lewis was my hero to the day he lost to uh, who did he lose to? Uh, wasn't Floyd Patterson? Was huh? It? Wasn't Floyd Patterson? Was he? No. Uh, I, I knew if he had something was wrong with him, Joe never could throw his right hand in that fight. He, he held the guy off uh, uh, for about eight or nine rounds with nothing but a jab. And uh, uh, was, let's see. Well, let's see. As a child. Who? Ezra Charles, that's who, that's who I think. That's he was not done so good, I said, because huh? I never heard of him. Yeah, Ezra Charles was a, uh, he never threw a punch. He was always a, uh, he punched back. He, he, what, he just hold his fist up there and let somebody else run into well, it? No, 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 <laughs> he, he, he'd let you throw it and then he would. Uh, counter? Yeah, counter, yeah. counter puncher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Joe Lewis was my first. He's still my hero. Roger, er, are we about ready to sign off? Yeah, okay. just about time. The uh, th there's another example I, I I'd like to get into sometime. We get a chance, and that's thieving. I'd like to thieving. Do that well, yeah, we need to give a we need to give a refresher course. I wish you well, ain't been burglarizing a week. You ain't well, I. Uh, 